What's going on guys? It's the Archaic Eagle here today with some more Fallout 76 beta gameplay footage. Today's video is going to cover some of the different features of Fallout 76, such as special, vats, weapons modding, and more. Let's not waste any more time talking about it though, and hop right in. Starting things off, we have the VAT system. Now for old veterans of the Fallout system, you know that VATS is one of the most important features of the game. It can save your life in a tough firefight. It lets you specifically choose where you want to aim your shots. And it's just really a very important tool. Now for those of you who may be new to the series, VATS is short for vault Tech Assisted Targeting System. Now the VAT system in Fallout 76 is a little bit different. Instead of slowing down time and letting you specifically choose where you want to aim your shots, in Fallout 76, combat continues at its normal speed, but you can still choose where you want to aim your shots. This is done, at least on the Xbox One, by going into VATS by pressing the left bumper and then clicking the right analog stick to the left or right to cycle through the different body parts. Now this does take some getting used to. It's It can be very clunky at times, but at the same time it does help to add to the realism without taking away from the basic functionality of the VAT system. This can take some getting used to, like I mentioned before, but once you get used to it, there's really not that much difference between the VAT system of Fallout 76 versus the VAT system of Fallout 3, Fallout New Vegas, and Fallout 4. Next up we have the player versus player combat system. Now this is something new that was added specifically for Fallout 76. In this system, any player who's over level 5 can go and actually initiate combat with another character who's over level 5. Now the player who's being attacked has the option to either respond and attack, which will set up a player versus player situation, or they can choose to not respond and try and run away. Now the player who is being attacked, until they respond to the player versus player request, will only take a minimal amount of damage. Now I have some concerns with this system, mainly because you're going to run into the situations where you get put on a server with players who only want to do player versus player combat, and you may not be wanting to do so. You may just be wanting to try and go through the, the single player events. So I want to see this system a little bit more when the full game comes out. I want to see how this works when the servers are running at max capacity, when you have a lot of different players, and see if the player versus player system actually creates more problems than it adds to the game. Another feature that's seen some change between Fallout 4 and Fallout 76 is the fast travel system. Now in Fallout 4, you could fast travel to any settlement that you had discovered without any type of penalty, whereas in Fallout 76, you do have to pay a small cap penalty for fast traveling between settlement markers. Now you do not have to pay to fast travel to your camp, and you do not have to pay to fast travel to teammates. And personally, I'm on the fence about this. The cap penalty is small. You're usually looking at around 10 to 15 caps, depending on where you're wanting to fast travel to. But at the same time, if you have, say, went and visited a vendor, and now you're wanting to try and fast travel out to a different location on the map, either to continue a mission or whatever you're wanting to do, this can become a bit of a hassle, especially if you're running low on caps. Now, I see the idea behind it. It's encouraging you to interact with different player characters, and it's encouraging you to explore the map and learn all the secrets of Appalachia. It's just something that I'm kind of on the fence about at this point, and I would like to see how this plays out when the game goes fully live and it's something that you're having to do on a day-to-day -day basis while playing through the game. Anyone who has played any of the previous entries into the Fallout series knows about the special system. Now if Fallout 76 is your first experience with Fallout, then you may not know really what I'm referring to with special. Special is the flagship character development system 
used for the Fallout series. What the special system does is it allows you to assign points to different character attributes, which allows you then to build different types of characters. In Fallout, special comprises the attributes of strength, perception, endurance, charisma, intelligence, agility, and luck. Now in previous Fallout releases, at the beginning of the game you would actually assign points to each of the different special attributes and then you could continue to add to those as you leveled up. With Fallout 76, this is a little bit different. You start off with one perk point assigned to each of your special attributes and then as you level up you can assign one more point to each of those attributes. Now this also changes the way that perks work. So perks such as Gunslinger or Life Giver or Action Boy or Action Girl, they each now have a number on them. And when you get the card, this number will be in the top left hand corner. And this tells you the required number of attribute points that need to be in its corresponding special attribute before you can assign it. So, say for example, you get Action Boy, which has a number of one. As long as you have at least one point in the corresponding special attribute, you can assign it. Now, if you have, say, a special attribute of strength that you have four in, and you've assigned perk cards that add up to four, you can't assign another perk card until you attribute another point into your strength attribute. Now, this is a little bit different than Fallout 4. It's going to take some getting used to. I like it because you can actually swap out the perk cards on the fly. It lets you make completely different characters as you go and can allow you to create characters that work best in different situations. I really can't wait to see how this plays out when the game goes live for good and you can see how the different character builds work in different situations. A couple of the features that actually remain the same between Fallout 4 and Fallout 76 are the scrapping and weapons customization systems. Much like in Fallout 4, if you have any weapons that you don't need, you can actually scrap those and get the base components back from them. For example, if you had a hatchet, and you decided to scrap it, you would get the wood from the handle and then you would get the steel from the head. This Again, this is useful because it allows you to further gather components which can then be used to build your camp or to do weapons modifications. And speaking of weapons modifications, for the most part weapons modifying is the same. You would go into a weapons workshop and you're able to apply certain modifications such as long barrels, enhanced grips, enhanced magazines. Those features remain the same. Now, as far as unlocking different weapon mods, uh, you actually need to scrap down weapons. As you scrap weapons, you unlock different mods that you can then use when customizing your weapons. Now, a couple of things as far as weapons are concerned is that the weapons now have conditions. If you go back and play Fallout 3 or Fallout New Vegas, you'll notice that the weapon has what's called a condition bar. Basically, you can only use this weapon so many times before it breaks and you have to repair it. This has actually been brought back again to add a sense of realism because in reality, you're not going to be able to use a weapon over and over and over again and not expect it to break. And once your weapon does break, you need to take it to a weapons workbench and repair it, which then refills the condition bar and allows you to use that weapon again. And the scrapping of things also applies to clothing as well. If you have additional clothing that you don't want to hold on to, if you scrap it, you get the base cloth back, which can be used in crafting as well. Overall, the weapons modification and scrapping system, the system, of collecting junk to get building materials hasn't really changed. It's just been tweaked a little bit to make it best work for the Fallout 76 system. So really no complaints here on my end. All right, so that pretty well wraps up my exploration of some of the basic features of Fallout 76. These are the features that I use the most often in Fallout 4 
and I figured it would be good to go ahead and cover these. If there are any other features that you want me to discuss or anything else you want me to look into related to Fallout, please let me know. Drop a comment down below. And as always, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button. I'm always putting out new content. And you can also follow me on Twitter at Archaic Eagle. This is where I'll post updates about what's going on with the channel. I hope you've enjoyed the video and I'll talk to you next time.